Hey you guys, Eddie Collins for Hot DW's Magazine. So what a wild weekend this has been. We were at uh, Hesse Scholdendorf over the weekend, uh, part of the BBT Convoy. I mean, it's been Volkswagens galore, and I'm sure you guys are gonna love all the content, but here's the best part, is that today, on Monday, we're here in Wolfsburg, where it all began, right? And normally this museum here, with the Auto Museum, normally it is closed on Mondays, but we got special access to come in and check it out. So you guys ready for this? This is pretty wild. By the way, it's my first time, so I'm beyond excited. So let's go check it out. Ta-da! You guys, look at this place. I mean, this is nuts. The amount of history that is here is unbelievable. I mean, if it wasn't enough to see all the wonderful cars that we saw at Hessisch, I mean, coming here and actually checking it out and seeing the museum, it, it, it's been awesome. We did a quick little flyby earlier to check it out and I'm overwhelmed already. I mean, look at this beautiful 43. I mean, you know, obviously you've got all these different models from 43, 55, 60, 66. And I mean, all of the pictures, all of the history, if you guys ever get a chance to come, you've got to come to this museum and, and just soak it all in and take a look at everything. Because I'll tell you what, as soon as you turn around and you start seeing something, you think to yourself, wait a minute, I didn't know, you know, like these bud bases, for example, look at all of the different models. And I mean, just the different styles. I mean, the, the makers, I never knew there were so many but it's, it's, it's just incredible. So let's keep going over here. And you guys are gonna trip out because there's some cars that I've never seen before. And uh, there actually are some cars that the world has never really seen before. So you've got some pretty cool prototypes. And of course you've got some classic Beetles. One of the neatest things was on the way here when we were driving here this morning, I actually saw a gentleman driving uh, like a 70s convertible and I thought that was pretty cool. And I thought, okay, I bet you Shin's taking a picture of him. You guys, speaking of cool cars, have you guys ever heard of the Silver Bug? Look at this right here. This is the 20 millionth car to be produced in Mexico, and it's here. And I dig the interior. The interior is so cool. And I mean, it's just, again, it's, it's awesome to see this thing here. I mean, it's, it's a brand new car, but it's an 81. So, I mean, just super, super, super cool. It's, it's awesome to see these. It's like traveling back in time. It always is just to see these cars. I mean, look at this. This, <laughs> I love the Pagali red interior. Beautiful. Just a beautiful, beautiful car. Uh, it's a 65. Now it says 1300. And uh, what's funny is I've got a 66. It's also a 16, uh, 1300. Yeah. Yeah, you got your 85 here. I mean, these are all these late model bugs, but one of the ones that I've always liked and I thought, okay, this could be a bucket list car is a Fritalin. These are so cool. Um, if, you know, for those of you watching, if you've never seen one of these, I mean, it's amazing. The view from the inside is wild. The windshield is just giant. I mean, if you've ever sat in a bay window bus, you know, compared to split window bus, you know that the visibility is, is great. But sitting in one of these, it's crazy. And there's a ton of leg room, ton of head room. Um, the fact that you've got the sliding doors on both sides, easy to get in and out of any parking spot. But check this out, you guys. How about a police car, huh? This is pretty crazy as well. I mean, looking at this thing is just mind blowing. I love the fact that you just have these simple little, you know, ropes for the most part to hold you in the canvas doors. I mean, look at that, the split dash. So cool. Unbelievable. I mean, look at the framework. If you actually look at the framework on this car, it's pretty interesting seeing the bows that instead of just arcing over, they're actually kind of bowed and laying flat as opposed to being round, which I think that's what kind of gives it the little flat, uh, the flat roof, which is awesome. And by the way, you guys, I don't know if you saw this as we were walking by, but the fact that it actually says Heb Mueller, yeah, this was one of the coach builders, one of three coach builders, in fact, that actually went ahead and made police cars back in the day. So how cool would it be to actually have, I mean, how cool would it be to have a Heb Mueller, but then actually have a Heb Mueller police car? And then look at this. I, I love it when they say experimental. That's when you know they're pretty, uh, pretty crazy car. Now this is a balloon kafer. I mean, let's face it. You know, I love getting in a bag and going for a ride. 
but I don't know how I would feel actually getting in a bug and then firing that up and having the balloon actually inflate. And uh, you know, it would be kind of interesting. Once you land, I guess you could just kind of take off. Okay, you guys, when we're talking about wild models, normally when you see this, you know, you would think to yourself, oh, cool, you know, early beetle. I mean, you know, pretty neat looking. One of the things that I really dig you know, are the little details as far as the lenses. Obviously, you've got your uh, the amber and the clear there, the rag top. But check this out, you guys. This car is actually amphibious. Yep, this one has actually been in the water. And having just gone in a Schwimmwagen over the weekend, which was unbelievable, seeing this, it's like, oh my gosh, look at this. I mean, it's just insane that this thing has actually seen water. I love how the exhaust comes up and I, it's just wild, absolutely wild. So, so cool. Gosh. And the fact that it's a rag top. So, I mean, you know, you, I love the fact that the interior is so cool too. Look at that. Uh, this, it, like I said, it's pretty overwhelming to see all this and just seeing all the different models and seeing the evolution of the cars. I've always wanted a taxi uh, cap for the top of my car. I think they're kind of neat. But look at this, 86, 95, and of course, 2003, the last edition, La Ultima Edición. But I mean, these are a trip. These are a total trip seeing these. I mean, look at this. I love the creativity that always comes out with Volkswagens, but when you see something like this, I mean, you think to yourself, okie dokie, we've definitely uh, reached a whole different level of creativity. This is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, I've been fortunate to actually see one of these wrought iron bugs. In fact, I've actually seen two of them. Uh, Randy Carlson actually has one in his yard. I think it's still there. Um, so these are pretty cool. If you've ever seen them actually being driven, it's just, it, you know, again, kind of a mind boggling thing. This is really cool just to see the sort of decoupage uh, take place here with all of, the, uh, all of the different stamps. I mean, that's awesome. The fact that they actually did, you know, the mirror and the wiper arms and the blades, Super, super cool. In fact, check this out, you guys. They even did the inside of the bumper blades. That's hilarious. Now, check this out, you guys. Look at this, huh? I'm telling you, here's a dream. Here's a 73, uh, what's it called? A uh, rip bow? Look at this. So that's a 1303, or as we call it, Super Beetle. So, kind of cool. Check out the design. I mean, look how wide the rear is. Look at that, look how deep these wheels are. That is wild. Now this is an uh, Edinger uh, creation here. And uh, those of you that know Edinger also did. Ocrossa. Exactly, Ocrossa. <laughs> Love it. Now, one of the things I remember seeing photos of this car, I, you know, like I said, this is my first time here. And so checking this out is, uh, is super, super cool seeing this in person because the first time I saw the spoiler, I thought, wow. And then the fact that it said Kame, you know, on the front of it, I thought, is that real? But yeah, it's real. Super, super cool. And of course it's a split window. Look at the seats, look at the headrest for the drivers. That's so cool. And I love the back. There's even your little uh, compartment here with your little ivory knob. Look at that. Super, super cool. All right, you guys, check this car out. This is kind of a trip. If you've never seen one, well, you shouldn't because it's the only one. Now, a quick little bit of history that I learned about, um, you know, basically what had happened with the uh, Type 34 Ghia, uh, as some people call them, Razor Ghias. Those were actually produced before the Corvair in the US, but when it went to the US, they were claiming that the taillights looked a little too much like a Corvair, and so they weren't too happy with them selling the Type 34 Ghias, and so no longer were be, you know, they, they weren't gonna be able available for us in the US. Well, what was interesting was that then when Volkswagen found that out, that they were gonna still make the Corvair, they said, well, we're gonna go ahead and come up with something really cool. And so they came up with this. This is the, the Phaeton uh, version, if you will. This is the EA128. And this car here, check out the seats, by the way. It reminds me of a bus, a one-third, two-third, 
front seat. This was supposed to go ahead and compete with the, uh, with the Corvair, but they never went through with it and they actually just made one. Um, Shin was mentioning a little bit ago that there might be the station wagon version that we'll see later on, but this is a trip. Now, the other thing that's kind of cool about this car is the fact that it actually has a two liter motor, six cylinder, it's a Porsche motor inside this thing. Uh, air cooled, by the way, you guys, because this is a 63. So, I mean, look at this. I love the series of vents up here, but could you imagine this in 63? I mean, how cool is that? So should we go into buses or what, you guys? All right, check this out. I love, 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 love fire trucks. And I mean, obviously this one here, you know, this is a 64. And what's really cool about these, obviously a lot of low mileage cars, but this, this here just, you know, it's always fun to see all, a lot of the different details that we don't have back home. Obviously you've got your side markers, uh, just super, super, super cool stuff. I, I like this, uh, this dome light back here. It almost looks like a beehive, which is kind of cool. Now these, these, these fire trucks are, you know, there's a lot of uniqueness to it, but check this one out. So this obviously, now this one, it says it's a 64. Now what's interesting, it's a big back window, like, you know, we would have on a 66, 67, but it's kind of interesting that they went ahead and obviously there are no gates, there are no holes to go ahead and, and bolt gates onto. And actually I, what's interesting is it does have the 67 uh, gas flap here, but I like the little cutout here so you could step up, get back there. Obviously you've got the trailer with the, uh, with the pump. This is where the hoses would go. Again, one third, two third. Yeah, this thing's gotta be a 67. Look at the dash, 67 dash. Super, 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 super cool. Cool roof rack, but my favorite of all is this right here ladder truck love this it's a 63 and i mean this is such a cool cool truck look at this thing incredible one of the neat things about this is the fact that not only does the ladder obviously go up and it goes up pretty high is the fact that you can actually go ahead and just loosen this and pivot it so you could you know go ahead and uh you know use it at whatever angle you need to and uh, you've got your little anchors here, your anchor points that would go ahead and come down. They slide out and then uh, unscrew them. And so you can uh, level yourself out. But how cool is this? Ah, I'm telling you. Now, what's interesting is obviously as the years have gone by, you know, you, you've got your fire truck red, but then you know, now, especially when you're driving around Germany, you see a lot of the emergency vehicles now with the, with the sort of neon orange color. And so here we've obviously got a, a, a 79 and uh, look at this thing. You can't miss this. this. This thing is definitely, definitely bright. Super cool. Love the mirrors. It's got what, you know, we call the wide, the wide bed truck mirrors or the commercial mirrors. Now you see why, just so you can actually go ahead and have visibility. But what's interesting is the fact that everything's obviously, you know, enclosed and confined. So you just, you know, roll it up and then all your equipment's there. I mean, these are pretty versatile. And uh, what's interesting about these is that they can't use them uh, after a certain period of time, if uh, some years have gone by, um, you know, let's say like, uh, oh gosh, we met a gentleman who had a, uh, a truck over at Hessage and it was 30 years old. It's gonna be 30 years old. And he said they were gonna have to retire it soon. But again, even for a 30 year old car, hardly any miles on this thing, which was really cool. So again, as you're walking around and you're checking these out, I mean, look at this thing here. <laughs> You see models that you've never seen before and just cool looking. I mean, these things are crazy, crazy, crazy looking cars. I've never seen them before. And I think that's one of the neat things that's always been so much fun about Volkswagens is the fact that the versatility is unbelievable. Look at the side on this. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Look at that. It's, it's like, a, like a bubble window you can still see through. Oh, and speaking of which, I, I, I can't wait to show you guys in a little bit something that I kind of tripped out on. But check this out. So you got your, your military vehicles. Obviously, we're familiar with the uh, Type 166 Schwimmwagen. This thing's pretty neat. Um, but this one here, this, this, I've never seen one of these before. And these are definitely, I mean, look at the wheelbase. It's actually it looks, it almost looks like a shorter wheelbase, but it, no, I guess not, than a, than a regular, uh, 
than a regular beetle. But look at, look at how long the hood is on this. At first I thought maybe it was amphibious, but uh, I mean, it's got some beefy mirrors. It's, uh, it's definitely, definitely a cool vehicle. I'll have to ask later where this was actually used. But of course you got your Kubel and then you've got your commander wagon. I mean, just so cool to see these cars up close. But of course, you guys, if you've never been to Hesse Scholdendorf to, uh, you know, like the show right now, the HO22 show, it, the next time it happens, you've got to go because these vehicles here, you see them in action. I actually had the opportunity to ride in one of them in the water. So when, when you actually see them in action, it's, it's just a whole different level than seeing them here at a museum. So you guys, when we're talking about really cool cars and important cars as well, this is one of them here, definitely a piece of history that uh, you should know about. Obviously this is 1960, the model is an EA 97. Now what's interesting about this car is the fact that Heinz Nordoff actually liked this car, liked the design, but he didn't want it to compete with the Beetle. And so what they ended up doing was they actually ended up sending it off to Brazil to be produced. And, uh, you know, when you first look at it, it almost looks like it would be, you know, like the first Type 3, if you will. But uh, it's, it's actually just a tad bit smaller than a Type 3. But it is interesting seeing the different attributes that this has than, than, the, uh, than the typical, you know, Type 3s that we see. But look at the details on this, you know, which is kind of interesting when you think about the Beetle and you think about the, you know, the hood and uh, just the way that it's actually stamped. Uh, the other thing that's kind of cool too, again, you know, some fender beating. Uh, really, really cool and unique. And um, the, the inside is really, I, I love the detail. When you, um, when you get a chance and you get up close, you'll actually see that the grab handle on the side is uh, vertical instead of uh, horizontal on the, uh, on the dash. But, you know, again, with details and styling, the dash where the, where the key goes into the ignition, it's actually kind of Frenched in, if you will, it's just super, super cool. Now the uh, the trunk again also has some unique detailing. I mean, look at that. Look at the bumpers too. I mean, the bumpers again. You would think, ooh, Type Three, but look at they're a lot thinner than uh, than what you'd see, let's say, like on a later one, and uh, maybe as thin as an earlier one, but squared off. Super, super unique. Gosh. I couldn't even imagine. I mean, I'm looking at uh, some of the details. Obviously, this poor little thing got tagged at one point in time. Yeah, go find one of those lenses, huh? <laughs> Look at this. Now, a Puma. A lot of people have heard of Pumas. Here you go. Here's a real one here. This is pretty cool. A lot of the times, you know, you hear about these and you, I, I think I've only seen maybe two in my whole life. And uh, definitely a cool looking sports car. It looks, I don't know. Looks kind of like the front of a Ferrari Dino maybe. <laughs> And, uh, and like the back of a, like the back of a Z, like an early Z. All right, so you guys, I mean, we've got the Puma, we've got the SP2. I've actually seen a couple of SP2s for sale, but follow me, you guys, because we actually have another place that we need to get to, and uh, we don't want to miss it. But I did want to show you this. I love, love, love this, what they call the glass model. I mean, this, uh, this notch back here is so unique. Look at the hood. It's so cool to actually see through it. Look at the gas tank. I mean, it's awesome how you can actually see. Look at the side of it. Just seeing the whole skeleton works, if you will, of this vehicle is amazing. I, I mean, how fun would it be to actually drive something like this from the, from the rooftop all the way to the back? It's just unbelievable how they did this this is so cool i mean obviously it reminds me of the uh, all the cutout models the you know the uh, engines and so forth that you see i mean this this is really 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 cool this is definitely you know obviously this wouldn't be driven it's a museum piece but super awesome now very cool right but you know we've seen notchbacks of course not like this but how about a cabriolet notchback i've never seen one and i've heard of them but check this out, you guys. Look at this. How awesome would it be to have that? So cool. Super, super, super cool. I mean, I couldn't even imagine. It would be so awesome to find something like this and then take it out and enjoy it, cruise the beach. 
I mean, this is, uh, this definitely would be amazing. Uh, and this one's a 61, by the way, you guys. So yeah, a little early. And there are so many different models. And I mean, you talk about your cabriolets. Now, I remember back in the 80s, uh, most of the people that drove these cabriolets, they were all the, uh, all the cute girls in high school, super popular. But check out these different models, you guys, that we've never seen before. I remember the Scirocco, that was another one that was really cool. Obviously, we've seen Passats. I love those headlights, by the way. And then the Corrado. It's so cool seeing all the different colors and the styling. Look at this. All these golfs. Gosh. It's really cool to see just the evolution of all these cars and how far they've come and just the development of them all and seeing, you know, from track to dirt, all that good stuff. It's really neat. One of the things um, that kind of uh, caught my eye that I thought was pretty neat too, is I'd never seen these off-road, uh, these off-road versions right here. It's called the Country. Never seen one of those before, which is pretty cool. So the, this one's a 91 Golf 2 Country. And look at that thing. That is cool looking. It looks like it'd be fun. It's four wheel drive. Jeez. Now, if you really needed to get somewhere and you didn't have four-wheel drive, well, then here you go. This is one way to go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's amazing. Have you guys ever heard of an ESVW1? I never had, but check this thing out, you guys. This was actually made for the U.S. and uh, it needed to meet certain uh, specifications, you know, as far as like uh, the bumper safety aspect of it, uh, just a lot of different things. But what's really cool is the fact that it's still air-cooled and the engine's still in the back which is kind of neat but look at this thing that is really trippy looking look at the uh the seat belts and obviously when you get in they just kind of automatically uh slide into place i mean if you saw this thing somewhere you'd wonder if you didn't see that it had a volkswagen badge on it you'd wonder what in the world what is that definitely a trip i love this this is cool another little skeleton car little crash test dummy and some of the models that you see here are also super cool just to see everything that they've been working on and developing. Look at this, concept cars, super, super, super cool. Even Herbie, you guys, even Herbie has made it out here. Of course, even Herbie, you know, famous Herbie. But these, look at this, gosh. Seeing some of these makes you just wanna get in it and go fly on the Autobahn. Like I said, you guys, there's so much to see. If you guys do get a chance, to come, you've got to make a pit stop. Look at these, this thing looks like it could fly. <laughs> this little one here, it's called a scooter. Gosh, look at this. All right, you guys, so talking about another air cool, this is the EA276, it's from 69. And I mean, look at this thing. I've never seen anything like that. Now what's interesting is the hood, also similar details to like what the, uh, the first one, what was it, the EA97? uh had and uh yeah it's kind of neat to see how things carry over this is front engine, front oh really this front wheel drive yes. oh my gosh okay you guys when you're talking about some really cool and rare cars how about this a 55 prototype i mean they were trying to come up with different designs new designs uh this was actually designed by gia and this is the ea 47-12 look at this thing i mean it is interesting seeing how it's got a lot of the attributes that we would kind of see on a Ghia uh, from the door obviously to the door handles and then just the the styling of the of the rear I mean this is kind of a trip look at this thing even the balance in the rear that's super unique um, and then speaking of prototypes how about a 1960 type 34 Ghia look at this the interior in here is Awesome, so rad. Now, when we're talking about unique designs, you guys, most of you that are familiar with the Type 34 Ghia, you know what it's kind of shaped like, but look at this one on the prototype. Look at that. It's almost like a scallop there, just on the side. I mean, it's so cool. Even the front is super unique looking too. This is amazing. What a cool, cool, cool car. Wow, look at that. Look at the turn signal lenses. I mean, <laughs> I love where the mirror is. It, it, just such a cool car. 
And then obviously here's the 69 um, model. And I mean, it's, it's cool to see how many attributes from the prototype actually went ahead and kind of transferred over. But obviously like this one doesn't have the grills up on the uh, cowl there and uh, the, the emblem. I love the fact that I kind of like this, how it's just kind of inset into the body, which is kind of neat. And uh, the other thing too, if you notice, look at the wipers. The wipers actually work uh, in an opposing fashion, which is kind of unique. So, but it's neat to see how these cars, you know, over time, how, how they just changed. I mean, look at this. And when, when you really start looking at the intricacies, it's kind of neat. Like for example, the, the doors, just the way that the doors are shaped. Look at this one here. That is so cool. Definitely, definitely unique. I think I like the, uh, the, the styling of the prototype as far as the rear, uh, the rear fender goes. Definitely uh, different with the whole kind of a scalloped look. So you guys, when we're talking about history, obviously for you bus freaks, we got to talk about the Platinum Wagon because this is where it started. And what was really cool was the fact that, you know, you've got this essentially, it's basically, it's a, it's a mobile platform, which is great for loading stuff. But uh, Ben Ponton was actually the one that was looking at this and said, hey, you guys have this all wrong. What you need to do is actually not have the driver behind the load so he can actually see where he's going. And so he went ahead and did that famous drawing of the first panel bus and the fact that obviously it was equally distributed with regard to the weight and uh, henceforth the bus was born but you guys this is where it started which was really really cool and it's neat to look at the frame and um, you know for for you bus freaks you'll recognize it and be like oh my gosh I, I recognize that yeah I know what that is and uh, it's just so cool to actually see one in uh, you know in, in real life so super 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 cool and look at this wow i've never seen this basis transporter now this is 73 is this an ormiga yeah, yeah. yeah okay so yeah uh this is the ormiga now most of the ormigas that i've seen they usually have the badge up on the front but uh, uh ormiga is an ant in spanish and obviously they could carry a lot more than than uh than their own weight and so henceforth the name since these were obviously used to go ahead and uh uh, you know, carry a lot of uh, things around the factory. So pretty, pretty cool. I've actually seen one or two at some of the local shows back home. So kind of neat, pretty cool. Oh, I'm telling you guys, way too much to see. And of course, then you've got these beauties here. Oh, look at this. So now this is a <clears throat> Dan and Howard Staus. This is, uh, this, it's a 51. Look at the, I love the color of it, the styling of it. Uh, obviously a famous coach builder. Most people don't know that a lot of these, well, guess what? They were made by hand. And so when you start thinking about that and you start thinking about the styling, it's pretty awesome when you actually start to think about the, how, how intense the labor must have been to go ahead and get something like this done up. I love the fact that the doors open, you know, as we call them, suicide doors. I mean, the dash, it's just so stylish, so classic. Just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful car. God, look at that. Unbelievable. I love the taillights. Ah, that'd be fun to have one of those, huh? And then, of course, you've got a row mesh. Uh, it was pretty cool to actually see uh, some of these at the show. In fact, there was one that looked, uh, I, I thought this was it actually. Uh, this is the Lawrence model. Here's a, it's a 59. Again, one of the uh, famous coach builders. And just the styling is awesome. I love the colors. I, I wish, you know, we still had colors like this today. And just, uh, I mean, the designs are amazing, amazing. Ugh. Like I said, you guys, too much to see and not enough time, but at least you guys got a chance to actually go ahead and check it out. Look at the motors. I mean, just, just the way these, these engines have actually developed over the years is pretty cool to see as well. From the early to the modern, they've done a pretty neat little job here at the, uh, at the museum to go ahead and, and uh, well, educate everybody on the history of the cars. So you guys, if you get a chance, Come down and check it out if you're in Wolfsburg. Definitely, definitely worth the visit. So, um, you guys, thanks for uh, thanks for watching and thanks for being a part of it with us because we got private access and you guys got to be a part of it. So, cool. Let's go on to the factory and see what we see there.